Jeannie, Miss Sylvia, and the rest of the church ladies. <laughs> come on, come around, please. Ooh, Miss Ori. Okay. Oh, there I am. Good morning. And um, I'm so excited about this today. This is like a full circle moment for me. This is my crew right here. We worked in public health for many years together. And so it is so wonderful to be um, declaring today No Menthol Sunday. We've acknowledged a lot of these days behind the scenes. So it's wonderful to make it a public, it, it, to make it officially public in the city of Minneapolis. Yes, so declaring May 21st, 2023 as No Menthol Sunday in the city of Minneapolis. Whereas on Sunday, May 21st, 2023, the city of Minneapolis proudly joins the Minnesota Menthol Coalition, faith leaders, friends, and families in celebrating No Menthol Sunday. And whereas No Menthol Sunday is a national day of observance led by the Center for Black Health and Equity and supported locally by the Minnesota Menthol Coalition and churches in Minneapolis. And whereas No Menthol Sunday is an opportunity for faith leaders to raise awareness about the negative health impacts of using commercial tobacco, including e-cigarettes and menthol products, and highlighting ways to improve health outcomes for black Americans. And whereas menthol cigarettes are a major reason why commercial tobacco use is, in, is the number one cause of preventable death among black Americans claiming 45,000 black lives every year. And whereas menthol is a chemical added to cigarettes and other tobacco products, including e-cigarettes that create a cooling sensation, tobacco companies intentionally design menthol products to be more appealing to youth and new smokers, more addictive and more difficult to quit. And whereas Minneapolis was one of the first cities in the nation to restrict the sale of menthol and other flavored tobacco products to promote healthier kids and communities targeted by the tobacco industry, including black residents, and whereas we recognize that racial health disparities are not the consequence of individual habits or poor choices, but rather reflect centuries of systemic racism that we need to confront with increased access to quality health care and resources and okay and whereas we invite commercial tobacco users to seek the necessary resources they need to be successful including free quitting help available through Minnesota's quit partner which offers one-on-one -on -one coaching and other helpful tools 24 7 and whereas faith communities can commit to creating comfortable, safe spaces for those who struggle with nicotine addiction, whereas one year ago, the Food and Drug Administration proposed rules to prohibit menthol cigarettes and flavored cigars, once implemented, this policy will protect kids from tobacco addiction, advance health equity, and save lives, especially among black Americans. And whereas, we must continue to uplift one another and advocate for healthier future and put health above tobacco industry profits. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and the city council declare May 21st, 2023 as No Menthol Sunday throughout the city of Minneapolis and commends this observance to all its city residents. Congratulations. Congratulations. You know, I, Councilmember Vitao said this is um, full circle. It's also full circle for me too. I was one of the first coaches in the LAMP Fellowship Program to end tobacco, um, in tobacco use in Minnesota, and tobacco use has gone down dramatically and continues to tackle, and these folks continue to do the great work, so congratulations.
We have another yep, we honorary could, resolution to we present. Could have Mr. Lyle Schwartzkopf and his family come on up. Hello, Eric, would you do the, us the honor of reading the resolution? And then, actually, Lyle, you want to stand in between Andrea and I? And maybe could some of the family come around on that side? That would be great. Um, we'll be designating Lyle Schwarzkopf our city clerk emeritus. Uh, as many of you know, we've seen Lyle Schwarzkopf around over many years, even even here during my past nine years, but you'll see through this resolution that Lyle has been around a very, very long time. So um, I'll go ahead and start. This resolution from the entire city council designates Lyle Schwarzkopf our city clerk emeritus. Whereas Lyle Schwarzkopf has had a very long and distinguished career in public service, beginning at Roosevelt High School, where as a young adult, he received Roosevelt Service Trophy, recognizing his service as president of the all student all city student council, as a member of Mayor Hubert Humphrey's Youth Welfare Commission, and as a member of Governor Luther Youngdahl's Youth Commission, and whereas after serving his nation as a member of the Army, Mr. Schwarzkopf returned to his home state and took up service as the field secretary and assistant executive director of the Minnesota Medical Association until 1964, and whereas in 1962, Mr. Schwarzkopf was first elected to represent his South Minneapolis district as a member of the Minnesota House of Representatives, where he chaired the local government committee and was responsible for leading initiatives to shorten the ballot by eliminating elected offices for non-policy positions in Hennepin County and passage of the statewide fluoridation bill, for which the Hennepin County dentists named him an honorary member of their society. Whereas in 1972, Mr. Schwarzkopf resigned his office as a state representative during his fifth elected term to assume the office of city clerk for the city of Minneapolis, becoming the 16th person to serve as city clerk since the incorporation of the city a century earlier in 1872, a post he would hold until April 1987. And whereas as city clerk, Mr. Schwarzkopf introduced reforms to modernize the clerk's office, including creating the first career classifications for office workers, developing the city's first ever records management program and retention schedules, and even being the first clerk in the nation to post the city's charter and codes to the internet in a partnership with the city's codifier, Municipal Code Corporation. And whereas because of his prior service in the state legislature and the strong relationships he established there, Mr. Schwarzkopf did double duty for the city by serving simultaneously as the city's lobbyist, a function he performed before the city had even created its first intergovernmental relations department or the director of that department. And through his efforts, Mr. Schwarzkopf was successful at advancing the city's legislative priorities and positions, including raising annual state aid to our city from five to $80 million. You wanna take it from here? And whereas, after serving nine years as both clerk and intergovernmental relations director in 1981, Mr. Schwarzkopf asked by Mayor, then Mayor Donald Frazier and the city council to assume the responsibilities of city coordinator. The city's chief executive staff position at the time and predecessor to the city operations officer, becoming the only person in the city's history to concurrently serve as city clerk, intergovernmental relations director, and city coordinator, which he did for five years, and thereafter served as city coordinator until his retirement in December 1990. And whereas, as city coordinator, Mr. Swarovkoff, expanded the city's centralized administration by gradually bringing under control of that office the city's management departments with core responsibilities for financial management and budget controls, personnel administration, technology systems, business licensing and inspections, intergovernmental relations duties, citywide communication responsibilities and oversight of the Minneapolis Convention Center while also defining the position of city coordinator as the primary convener of the city's charter departments under the shared authority of the mayor and the city council. And 
Whereas, while serving in all of these roles, Mr. Schwarzkopf provide, I'm sorry, proved himself the master strategist by his deft ability to capably negotiate the city's unique form and structure of government. Working across political lines and between departments with mayors and city council members and even outside of City Hall with constituents, neighborhood groups, businesses, and other stakeholders to ensure all viewpoints were engaged and acknowledged while building consensus around improving the performance of the city enterprise and securing projects and funding that ensured Minneapolis's place as a vibrant and world-class major city. And whereas in his professional retirement, Mr. Schwarzkopf was appointed a member of the Minneapolis Charter Commission and served on that body from 2010 to 2023, which was a very active period that saw the public adoption and implementation of a complete plain language revision of the city charter, the assignment of redistricting functions to the charter commission, which it completed in 2012 and again in 2022, and the voter approval of the executive mayor and legislative council system of government. And whereas Mr. Schwarzkopf continues to serve his community today as an election judge with the city's election and voter services division in the office of the clerk, of the city clerk, working at age 91 <laughs> in his home precinct, which happens to be served by a polling place that is conveniently located in the lobby of his home at the Walker Place in South Minneapolis. <laughs> a pretty short commute. <laughs> Whereas, despite a broad career in public service, it was his service as city clerk that remained a passion and priority throughout his life, which is best illustrated by his long association as a member of the International Institute of Municipal Clerks, where he served as president, vice president, and a member of his board of directors for more than 11 years from 1974 to 1985, and during that time, he founded the Municipal Clerks Education Foundation, which has to date established a $1 million endowment to assist municipal clerks from around the world to improve their professional education, and whereas Mr. Schwarzkopf's public service career is a legacy of selfless generosity and deep commitment to the community, a beacon and an example to current and future generations of public servants, an amazing tribute to his family, and a gift that has given significantly and substantially to the people of the home that he has loved and lived in throughout his entire life, the city of Minneapolis. Now therefore be it resolved that the mayor and city council do hereby declare that in recognition of his service, Lyle Schwarzkopf is to be formally designated as city clerk emeritus of and for the city of Minneapolis, and this honorary recognition is presented with deep respect, admiration, and appreciation for his lifetime of service and the many contributions he has given to the city of Minneapolis. Mr. Schwarzkopf, I'm not sure how, what else we can say here other than this long thing, but I, I will say that as we wrap up uh, Public Service Recognition Week, I can think of nobody better to honor this council meeting um, than you. And we all here um, know a little bit of what it's like to have a life in public service and um, you know, your, your career, uh, both inside and outside of City Hall, just really reflects everything we're trying to do as a democracy, to be transparent, to make the public understand what we're doing here. Um, and we are so grateful. We have Ilsa from your family, there you go, uh, that wanted to say a couple words. Okay. Um, my name is Ilsa and I'm Lyle's youngest child. Um, the family was asked to speak, so I'm gonna talk about, I was one year old, one years old when my dad took the job as city clerk 
And um, as an adult, I now know that he had lots of varied responsibilities, but my childhood memories are filled with, mostly with dad lobbying for the stadium. Uh, would Minneapolis beat out Bloomington for the location? Dome or no dome? Vikings and twins in the same facility? For the first 10 years of my life, I feel like our household conversations were all stadium related. In fact, even after the decision was made that the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome would be built in downtown Minneapolis and I thought dad's work was done, my oldest brother Eric was on the construction crew building the stadium and so our conversation still revolved around it. <clears throat> like I said, I know that my dad had many work responsibilities, but his number one priority was always his family and it still is. He loves our mom with all of his heart. He has taught all of his kids and grandkids the meaning of dedication, hard work, ethics, and responsibility, not only through his words, but through his actions. And I think my siblings and I could explain subcommittees, caucusing, primaries, and Robert's Rules of Order to anyone who asked. We learned it through osmosis. Our dad was a living, breathing civics textbook. He is the true definition of a public servant, and every, Minneapolis, every citizen of Minneapolis has benefited from his years of service. So thank all of you for honoring him today. Thank you. Now, if, if we could just all kind of gather in a little tighter. Lyle's been a good mentor to many clerks, yeah. not just yeah. here, but around the world. Yeah, well, I want to I want to thank you very much, uh, Council President and members of Council. I appreciate your help on this too. That was very important, and the mayor. I thought I would say just one story, and then I'll quit. But um, when I was appointed city clerk and I took the job in February of 1972, two days later, I get a call from the president of the council's office. And back in those days, you know, the president of the council really ran the city. And so um, the, the call said, come on down to the council president's office. I want to talk to you. So I went down to um, the council president's office, and um, he said to me, um, we do not trust the mayor. Mayor Stendrick is the mayor, and we don't trust him. So what we want you to do as a city clerk is to be the liaison between the city council and the mayor. So I figured, okay, fine, I'll be the liaison between the city council and mayor. And I went down to Mayor Stendrick's office, and I kind of knew Mayor Stendrick, but not well. And I walk in, and I sit at one end of the table on a desk, and he sits at the other end. And uh, he said, you know, you ran a candidate against me when I ran for mayor. And I said, yes, I was a county chair, and that was a responsibility. And both political parties ran a candidate against you, and you were an independent, and you won. And he said, I said, well, it's kind of like being a hired gun, being a, you know, being a uh, chair of a, of a political party uh, county committee, and he then moved back in his chair, opened up his desk drawer, pulled out his pistol, because he was a police officer, pulled out his pistol, threw it across the desk at me and said, they're hired gun. And so it was not a very good start, you know, trying to be a, a liaison. But as years went by, I was down to his office almost every week after the council meeting, every two weeks, and I would explain to him um, what the council did and why he should not veto you know, any of their actions and help him rationalize why he should support it and then he would support it and then things were good. But that was, I found out quickly what the job of the city clerk was there. <laughs> wow, I, I thought... Uh politics, but uh, that is a new level. 
Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Andrea Jenkins, and I am the president of the Minneapolis City Council. I'm going to call to order this regular meeting for Thursday, May 11th. This morning, we have two resolutions that we just presented. Um, the No Menthol Sunday Honorary Resolution and the Lyle Schwarzkopf Honorary Resolution. And so now I will ask the clerk to call the roll to verify the presence of a quorum. Councilmember Wansley. Present. Councilmember Johnson is absent. Councilmember Osmond. Present. Councilmember Payne. <coughs> Present. Councilmember Koski. Present. Councilmember Shugtai. Present. Councilmember Chavez. Present. Councilmember Ellison. Here. Councilmember Vita. Present. Councilmember Rainville. Present. Councilmember Goodman. Present. Vice President Palmasano. Present. President Jenkins. Present. There are 12 members present. Next, thank you. We have, uh, we do have a quorum. Next, we have the adoption of our agenda. Colleagues, the agenda for today's meeting is before us, and I will ask, are there any amendments to the agenda? And I apologize if people are in queue. I don't have my um, management up yet. Council Member Ellison. <laughs> Thank you, Madam President. Um, uh, I'm, I'd like to bring an amendment uh, to the agenda. It's a motion for a uh, staff direction. Happy to speak on it now or speak on it uh, when it comes up in the agenda. Uh, but yes, would like to would like to add this to the agenda under motions. Uh, Councilmember Ellison has moved to um, amend the agenda. Are there any other amendments? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Madam President, I'm calling the roll on the agenda as amended. Correct? Yes. Okay. Councilmember Wansley. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That carries, and the amended agenda is adopted. Um, the next item of business is the acceptance of the minutes from our regular meeting on April 27th. May I have a motion to accept those minutes? So moved. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Wansley. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Council Member Vita. Aye. Council Member Rainville. Aye. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That carries, and those minutes have been accepted. Finally, we have the referral of petitions, commission, communications, and reports to the proper committees. May I have that motion, please? So moved. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Wansley. Aye. Council Member Osmond. Aye. Council Member Payne. Aye. Council Member Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 12 ayes. 
that carries and those matters have been referred. The next order of business is reports from our standing committees, beginning with the report from the Business Inspections, Housing and Zoning Committee. The report will be presented by the committee's chair, Council Member Goodman. Thank you, Madam President. The Business, Housing, Inspections, and Zoning Committee is bringing 16 items forward for approval this morning. I want to begin by acknowledging that the committee uh, was able to thank and celebrate Arlene Robinson, who is retiring from CPED Housing. Uh, she has been a very valued member of our team, working on some of the most difficult projects throughout the city and focusing on her whole commitment, uh, focusing on projects that uh, many others probably would uh, not stick around for and able to do it in a really um, community-oriented way. I'll note that she's worked on affordable housing projects on the north side as well as projects surrounding George Floyd Square and she will be missed by the CPED housing team. We will have item one, which is an on-sale liquor and no live entertainment for Paraluma at 548 Washington Avenue North. Item number two is a rental hall license and extended hours for the Nicollet Event Center. I want to note that in front of you, you have a list of uh, conditions as sent to us by business license operating folks. I will note that this has been in complete collaboration with Council Member Chugtai, who has done a good amount of work on this and should be thanked for uh, working so collaboratively with licensing um, to make this get to yes. Item number three is the Luminaire 770 9th Street Southeast for a rental hall license. Item four is Little T's, an expansion of premise and sidewalk cafe license. Item five is extended hours for Arco at 2517 Riverside Avenue. Item number six is uh, bond issuance, the final piece of financing for the Northrop King residential project at 1500 Jackson Street Northeast. Item seven is the TIF plan and housing revenue bonds for the Plymouth Avenue Apartments project. Item number eight are the liquor license approvals and nine are the renewals. Item 10 are the gambling license approvals. Item number 11 is approving a legislative director regarding to the TNC drivers. Uh, this is to do a bit more research uh, as we move forward on our work in this area. Item number 12 is an alley vacation at 2840 Chicago. Item 13 is a rezoning at 465 Gerard Terrace. Item number 14 is a rezoning at 13746 Street West. Item 15 is a rezoning at 2426 Inglewood Avenue. And item number 16 is approving the application for NOLO uh, that is at 511 Washington Avenue North. With that, I will move all items 1 through 16 for approval this morning. Thank you. Councilmember Goodman has moved this committee's report. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Wansley. Aye. Council Member Osman. Aye. Council Member Payne. Aye. Council Member Koski. Aye. Council Member Shugtai. Aye. Council Member Chavez. Aye. Council Member Ellison. Aye. Council Member Vita. Aye. Council Member Rainville. Aye. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That carries, and that report is adopted. The next Committee is, to report is the Committee of the Whole, which will present, be presented by uh, Council Vice President, who chairs that committee. Thank you, Council President. The Committee of the Whole forwards two items for um, approval this morning. The first is our last CCPO appointment, the Community Commission on Police Oversight um, appointment of Derek Vorpal for seat 12, Ward 12 for a full term. The second item is our audit committee appointments of the community members uh, for three-year terms. That includes Lily Hosbean from Ward 1, Sarah Renner, Ward 7, Jay Singleton, Ward 8, and Hallie Williams, Jr., Ward 11. I move both of these items for approval. Council Vice President has moved this committee's report. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? See none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Wansley. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That carries, and that report is adopted. And next is the Policy and Government Oversight Committee. That report will be presented by the Chair, Councilmember Ellison. Thank you, Madam President. Um, and I appear to be losing my voice a little bit, so sorry if I'm a little raspy. 
Um, the Policy and Government Oversight Committee is bringing forward 25 items for approval. One is the passage of a resolution for the 2023 quarterly donation reports. Two is passage of a resolution uh, for gift acceptance for the Joyce Foundation for Travel Expenses. Three is passage of a resolution for gift acceptance for the Major Cities Chiefs Association for Travel Expenses. Four is a passage of a resolution for gift acceptance from the John Jay College of Criminal Justice for Travel Expenses. And five is a passage of a resolution for gift acceptance from the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives for travel expenses. <clears throat> uh, six is a passage of a resolution for gift acceptance for the National Association of Counties and Cities Health Officials for travel and lodging expenses. Um, uh, seven is a resolution for gift acceptance for the National Association of County Cities Health Officials for travel and lodging expenses. And eight is, uh, is a passage of a resolution for gift acceptance from the West Michigan Sustainable Business Forum of Travel and Lodging Expenses. And I will say that I think two of these items um, uh, are coming, we're accepting the gift after the events have already happened. We had a good discussion at POGO about how while it is legal for us to do that, uh, it, is, um, it is not in best practice. Staff have been informed of that. And so we're gonna keep working as a committee to make sure that we get these gift acceptances before the events happen uh, and not after the fact. Um, <clears throat> All right, nine is approving a legislative directive related to an analysis of hiring practices for public safety workers. 10 is approving transgender, transgender equity council reappointments. 11 is authorizing agreements with XL Energy to purchase renewable electricity from their Renewable Connect program. And 12 is accepting a bid for Minneapolis maintenance facilities roof replacement project. 13 is accepting a bid for a pavement and saw, pavement sawing. 14 is accepting a bid for yard maintenance. 15, is 15 is accepting a bid for 2023 small diameter pipe cleaning and televising. 16 is authorizing contract amendment for property maintenance, mowing, and snow removal services. 17 is authorizing contract amendment with Prize Brewery for leased space improvements at uh, 550 Casota Avenue Southeast. 18 is authorizing temporary construction easement amendment with Metropolitan Council for the Southwest Light Rail Con Transit Project. 19 is approving a legal settlement workers' compensation claim of David Shepard. 20 is approving a legal settlement workers' compensation claim of Wendy Johnson. 21 is approving a legal settlement workers' compensation claim of Bruce Smith. 22 is approving a legal settlement uh, workers' compensation claim of Danielle Evans. Uh, 23 is approving a legal settlement workers' compensation claim of Keith Smith. Uh, 24 is approving a legal settlement workers' compensation claim of Paul Hyun. And 25 is approving a legal settlement workers' compensation claim of Nathan Johnson. And with that, I will move approval of all these items. Uh, uh, Councilmember Ellison has moved this committee's report. Uh, is there any discussion? The chair will recognize Councilmember Chavez. Uh, thank you, Council President Jenkins. I'd just like to pull out 22 to 25 for a separate vote, but no discussion is needed. Thank you, Councilmember Chavez. Um, and um, seeing no further discussion, I will ask the clerk to call the rolls on items one through 22. One through 21, my apologies. Councilmember Wansley. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That carries, and that portion of the report is adopted. Uh, and next, we will take up items 21 through 25. 22 through 25. 22 through 25. Um, is there any discussion? Councilmember Ellison. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I will um, ask the attorney to hit the buzzer on me if I say anything out of step. But, um, <laughs> um, but uh, these items, I'm, I'm glad that we continue to highlight these items. Uh, they're sort of related to workers' comp claims. Um, and, uh, and while you know, we can't discuss the details of these specific claims, we know that some of them are, are due to um, the uh, 
uh, how easily accessible some of these PTSD claims and how they don't really need to be resolved at the state uh, because of state law. There has been some movement at the state level for, uh, 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 for the city to have a little bit more recourse so taxpayers aren't getting gutted by this. Uh, and this has been affecting every single city in the state of Minnesota, not just the city of Minneapolis. And so just wanted to highlight that for the public uh, to know that um, uh, state action has been taking place on this. And, um, uh, and I'm glad that the, the, I will be supporting these items because I think that our staff has done a great job, all things considered, uh, with state law. Um, but I am glad that we continue to sort of highlight these and, and, and have a transparent discussion for the public on uh, these items. That's all. Thank you, uh, Chair Ellison. And, and I would only add to your comments that um, the, the shifts at the state seem to be requiring um, some of these claimants to um, be able to return to work if they overcome their challenges uh, that they face with PTSD. And so um, that is an improvement as well. Councilmember Wansley. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I also want to highlight, um, you know, opportunity sets before this body to also address that there's a, a whole provision, a section in the MDHR legal settlement that also spells out ways in which we can ensure that officers are not being placed in uh, situations or conditions where, um, you know, they are likely to in be exposed or acquire PTSD from the work that they're doing. Um, so I really hope that we will use those provisions um, within our own legal settlement that this body will have oversight over and have some capacity to enforce uh, to make sure that those dynamics um, don't continue and then continue to be a financial burden on taxpayers in our city. Um, so I do want to highlight great statewide action, but there are some opportunities on the municipal level for us to have some accountability around this too. Um, and seeing no further discussion, I will ask the clerk to call the rolls on items 22 through 25. Councilmember Wansley. Nay. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Nay. Councilmember Chavez. No. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are nine ayes and three nays. Uh, those items passes and uh, the that portion of the report is adopted. And that completes the reports from, I'm sorry. Um, my apologies. Next, we have the report from the Public Health and Safety Committee, which will be presented by the Chair, Councilmember Vita. Thank you, Madam President. The Health and Safety, the Public Health and Safety Committee is bringing forward three items. Item one is authorizing a partnership agreement with the Nat Natural Resources Defense Council to be a Food Matters City partner. Item two is authorizing contracts with neighborhood organizations qualifying for the neighborhood's 2020 Shared Resources and Collaborations Fund. And item three is the passage of a resolution appropriating funds to the Office of Arts, Culture, and Creative Economy for a National Endowment for the Arts Grant. I'll move for approval of these items. Councilmember Vital has moved that committee's report. Uh, are there any comments or questions? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Wansley. Aye. Councilmember Osmond. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Allison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That carries in that. Um, Committee's report is adopted. Finally, we have the report from our Public Works and Infrastructure Committee, and that report will be presented, I'm gonna assume, by the Vice Chair, um, and that would be Council um, Member Koski. Thank you, Madam President. The Public Works and Infrastructure Committee is bringing forward two items today. Number one is authorizing the 2023 Street Lighting Replacement Project Approval and Assessment. 
And item number two is the passage of resolution expressing the city's priorities for Olson Memorial Highway, Highway 55, that support an Olson Memorial Highway redesign, prioritizing public health, racial equity, safety, affordability, accessibility, and sustainability, and restores uh, attributes to this quarter that were present when this quarter was Sixth Avenue North, a vibrant, predominantly Jewish and African-American cultural quarter. With that, I move approval of these items. Thank you, Council Member Koski. Um, and Kos Council Member uh, Koski has moved that committee's report. Is there any discussion? The chair will recognize Council Member Wansley. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I said similar comments in committee, but first just want to thank uh, my co-author, uh, Council Member uh, Ellison, um, whose ward has the Alton Memorial Highway um, and whose community has been organizing for several years to, um, you know, lead the effort behind Bring Back Six. Um, and I also just want to take this opportunity to uh, reiterate my gratitude to those community members who have lost um, residents, uh, children um, due to vehicle uh, accidents and and it's just really disheartening that, you know, we've had a highway um, cause such great harm for our one of our most diverse communities. And I'm really um, grateful that those communities were resilient and continue to hold elected officials uh, feet to the fire to bring um, some reparative um, action steps towards uh, this highway. Um, and hopefully we can start with the Bring Back Six and revitalizing that corridor and making it a pedestrian friendly corridor um, that supports the cultivation of actual permanent affordable housing, um, locally owned businesses, what it once was before um, racist uh, planning um, destroyed um, and divided that particular community. So I just again want to give so many thanks. Um, we've gotten tons of uh, just shout outs and, and support from community members who have said that this is a historical resolution. Um, it puts the city on a pathway in its own way around truth and reconciliation around uh, racist city planning, um, especially when it comes to highways. Um, so I just want to give full credit and just thanks to the community members who helped make made this day possible and made this resolution possible. Thank you, Council Member Wansley. Um, and seeing no further discussion, could please call the roll. Councilmember Wansley. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That carries, and um, that report is adopted. That does now complete the reports from our standing committees. And next we have the introduction and referral calendar. Pursuant to notice, Council Member Goodman will be introducing and giving first reading to an ordinance amending Title I general provisions to amend provisions related to city employees authorized to issue administrative citations and offenses subject to administrative enforcement which will be referred to the Business Inspections, Housing, and Zoning Committee in the next cycle. Are there any questions from my colleagues on that introduction? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Wansley. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That carries. And the ordinance is referred to the biz committee in the next cycle. Next order of business is resolutions. We have two honorary resolutions that were read at the beginning of the meeting. Are there any further comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion to adopt these resolutions. So moved. Second. Um, clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Wansley. Aye. Council Member Osman. Aye. Council Member Payne. Aye. Council Member Koski. Aye. Council Member Shugtai. Aye. Council Member Chavez. Aye. Council Member Ellison. Aye. Council Member Vita. Aye. Council Member Rainville. Aye. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. <laughs> Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That carries, and those resolutions are adopted. Next, we have 
the motion that was added to the agenda, and I'll call on Councilmember Allison to introduce that directive to the city clerk and auditor staff to coordinate with the mayor and city administration on the details of personnel related actions supporting the implementation of the new mayor legislative council governance structure. Thank you, Madam Allison. Thank you, Madam President. Um, <clears throat> so this, um, this uh, direction came out of a conversation that we had during the POCO committee. Uh, we've been receiving a lot of uh, you know, new positions or reclassifications of positions, but we receive them one at a time, two at a time, maybe as many as five at a time. Uh, and it's been you know, all year. We all, we've passed, I think, almost every single one of them. We've had discussion around a few new positions in uh, police and, and in uh, the Office of Community Safety. Um, but I felt like it, was, it would be a good time for us to get a sense of uh, how far we've come in terms of personnel changes, reclassifications, um, uh, salary changes, um, and, uh, and, and also get a little bit of a forecast of where we plan to go for the rest of the year. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a, I think it'll be a good platform for the community to get caught up. It'll be a good place for us to compile this information in front of the POGO committee where council members can come and ask questions as well. Um, and, uh, and uh, this is no way intended as a gotcha. The, the, we're not rehashing government structure uh, here. We are uh, just getting an update on uh, how far we've come and, and where we think we're going in terms of personnel changes. And so I feel like this falls within the purview of the council. It's, an, it's a request for information. And I believe it would uh, be a receiving file. I'll ask the clerks. Uh, I believe it would be ultimately a receiving file at committee. And so it wouldn't necessarily be action, uh, action taken. So. Um, um, happy to read the motion if people want, but um, that's the gist of it. Thank you, um, Councilmember Ellison. Is there any comments or questions? I see a few colleagues in queue. Uh, first is Councilmember Payne. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, one question I had on this was uh, around uh, bullet point three in terms of the budget impacts. And I don't think it explicitly states that, but I just wanted to get some clarification around, uh, I know some of these positions are current FTEs, so there wouldn't necessarily be a change item associated with some of these positions, but I believe some of them would have change items, especially if we're thinking about some of these reclassifications that might be at different uh, grade levels. So. Uh, would it require an amendment to explicitly request like the delta in terms of budget impact, or would that be inclusive of the uh, bullet point three? I had imagined that as being inclusive, but I'll defer to the clerks to see if we need to amend it in any way. Uh, Madam President, to the inquiry from Council Member Payne, and I would defer to the intent of the author, much of that probably won't be available at that granular level of detail. Departments are just now in preparation of putting forward requests. Those requests that were included in the mayor's first biennial budget um, that were approved both by the mayor and the council for 2024, we could grab. Those that are potentially amending the budget in 2024 as a supplemental piece, we wouldn't necessarily have. The mayor has not brought forward those recommendations. So things that are yet to come, we don't know what would be proposed for approval. Those things that were already through the entire process and included in the approved supplemental budget as it stands today without further amendment, both by the mayor or the council, would be things I think that we could produce because those are things that were already approved. They've been through the whole process. We can put evaluations in place to say, what were those positions? How were they graded? Were they reclassified? What is the budget impact of those? So I think there's a partial answer there. And I wanted to be clear on that because I think your question might have anticipated the second half of that and, and we won't have that. Um, if it, so just to maybe restate what I'm hearing, uh, this is inclusive of what, ha of what we know, but it's not directing staff to generate new budget numbers. Madam President, that would, that's what I intend to say, is that this would be the things that are known, data that exists and is available after it's already been through the entire process and approved by council. It would not be inclusive of things that you have yet to come. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Rainville. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Councilmember Ellison, thank you for bringing this forth. Uh, I'm especially excited to learn more about how we're going, uh, the plans to staff our legislative branch so we have the tools we need to do our job. So thank you. Thank you. Great. 
Um, see no further discussion, I will ask the clerk to call the roll. Councilmember Wansley. Aye. Councilmember Osmond. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That carries and that motion is adopted. Next, there are two items of new business today that will be received and filed. First, pursuant to the Code of Ordinances, are my two appointees to the newly reconstituted Audit Committee. Um, and that would be Council Vice President Palmasano as the chair and Council Member Koski as a member of that Audit Committee. And then second, last Thursday, the mayor uh, presented his State of the City Address and we will officially receive his remarks for inclusion in the public record. Are there any comments from my colleagues? With that, I will direct the clerk to call the, I mean, to file those matters um, as uh, presented. And finally, uh, we have completed all the business of our agenda today and I will entertain any announcements from my colleagues. Do any council members have announcements to share this morning? Uh, first, I'll recognize council member Vital, followed by council member Koski. Thank you, Madam President. I just quickly wanted to say shout out to the kids at Olson Middle School. I got to be principal for a day there last week, and it was a really cool experience. And then last week, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers, especially my mother, Terry, who's the best mother in the world, and also to uh, Betsy Brock, my policy aide, who's a mother and is the mother of Ward 4. She makes sure we have, we have treats and fruits and vegetables and coffee, so thank you, Betsy. Thank you, Councilmember Vital, and yes, uh, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers uh, in the city of Minneapolis uh, and on this council as well. Um, next, Councilmember Koski. Thank you, Madam President. I just wanted to remind my uh, colleagues and uh, our community members that Saturday is Neighborhood Day. And so many of our neighborhood associations are having events, and I just encourage you to join in on the action pre-Mother's Day. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Next is uh, in queue is Councilmember Rainville. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. I'm getting nervous. <clears throat> so I, uh, I want to have two announcements. One is to thank Resource for the uh, Doors Open event, which is this weekend. A lot of people have volunteered time, and it's an excellent opportunity. Uh, now that the pandemic is over officially, uh, per President Biden, uh, that we can s explore these great, wonderful buildings in Minneapolis that normally we wouldn't see. So I hope everybody has a chance to take that up. And I have to give a shout out to my mother, uh, Louise Rainville, who will be turning 90 this year. And uh, it's so great to have your mom, who is 90, always tell you what to do. So uh, even though she's 90, she picks up that phone and, and gives me uh, job ratings all the time. So happy, oh, wow. happy Mother's Day, Mother. OK, given that, I now have to shout out my own mom who I think is the greatest mom in the world. So thank you, mom. I was actually born on Mother's Day. In fact. So um, the chair will recognize Council Member Wansley. Thank you, Madam President. Um, in light of, um, you know, Mother's Day, uh, the, the feelings around that, I will also extend um, strength and gratitude to those um, who moms are not living. Um, I've been also vocal about my experience of suffering a miscarriage very early in my term. Um, so this, this actually is hard. I anticipate this being my first Mother's Day. Um, so those who also have experienced um, loss, um, extending just strength and love to you and those who have um, also um, have lost their moms or lost mothering or parental figures in their lives who have um, been supportive um, I, I want to hold you up to on what can be a very, as we know, um, sensitive and, and also significant day. Thank you, Councilmember Wansley. Councilmember Chuck Tye. 
Um, thank you, Madam President. Um, you do this for everyone else's birthday, so I wanted to acknowledge that yesterday was your birthday. Oh, We're wow. very thankful that you lead uh, our council. Oh, boy. Thank Happy you birthday. so much. I really appreciate that, Council Member Chuck Tai. Um, it has been a, a, a very long journey. Um, next in queue, my computer died, but I think it's Council Vice President Palmasano. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just didn't want it to be um, not said that this is the end of Public Service Week. Um, earlier this week, we honored the STAR Award winners, and that is just some really, um, just a real little taste of all, not, o not only everybody that was recognized through that process, but just the people that won those specific awards. But we have 4,000 employees um, here in the city of Minneapolis, and I have been reflecting this week at how important public service is, um, what that means, uh, speaking to some constituents over this past week that also are city employees, what that means to them uh, and in their lives and, and in our community. Um, one of our public service workers was recognized by his two small kids on his block and brought in as, as a superman to school, um, somebody that they admired on their block. And I just want to appreciate that um, our public service workers um, should be thanked in so many ways. One of those is here at City Hall, but um, I hope that everybody in our communities recognize the importance of public service, the, the sacrifices that are made in working our public service jobs, and, um, and how much we admire them. So thank you to everybody, um, and happy Public Service Week. Thank you, Council Member, um, I'm sorry, Council Vice President um, Palmasano. And seeing no further um, announcements, we have completed our business today, and with nothing further to come before the council, and without objection, this meeting is adjourned. mistaken for a stray and gets returned to you promptly. To get a license, just go online to apply or call 311. License fees help pay for services that